Discover the secret to seeing and knowing God in today's motivational message, The Power of Focus. And in today's Israel Up to the Minute, Brian Bush is standing by with an update on a brutal terror attack at the peace rally in Turkey. Stay with us. Harvest begins right now. everyone and welcome to Motivational Monday here on The Harvest Show. I'm Valerie Lowe <laughs> along with the gang of guys. They were serenading me just before the show started. So you want to continue with that, Pete Summerall? Well, it's clearly <laughs> only you, Valerie. So because oh. you are the most consistent one on this program. While the rest of us have other duties, yes. you are solely dedicated to this program and I appreciate that. Well, that's good coming from the boss. Hey, hey. It's been nice having you with us. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I mean, he just made my day. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're headed to the Holy Land, and I'm bringing this up because uh -huh. you're going next month, and we know that people love it when you pray for them at the Holy Land. So what do they need to do? You know, send in your prayer request, and uh, I'm going to be taking them down to the uh, Western Wall, the uh, uh, also called the Wailing Wall, mm -hmm. and uh, look forward to being there and praying for all of our partners and praying for the prayer requests that have come in and believing God for miracles. It is a place of incredible prayer that goes up 24 mm -hmm. hours a day, every day of the year. So uh, rain or shine, there's always people there praying. Now you used to have to take like a scroll or something with all the prayer requests. Now mm -hmm. you've got a little paper. flash drive, yeah, right? We, we used to take it all on paper and that was kind of a challenge going through customs. Uh, to why do you have all this with you? Uh, but now I take a little flash drive, download mm -hmm. all the prayer requests onto a flash drive and take it down to the wall and uh, it's a good time. So what would you say is the number one prayer request that you get when you know when you when we when we send them to you you know it's 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 there's a lot of issues in the world mm -hmm. and our prayers are really with a lot of people who are very troubled certainly financial issues are at the top of the list of uh, uh, family issues uh, are right there and of course illness uh, is there also it, there but those are the three big prayer requests that people call in for repeatedly. Okay, so be sure to get your prayer request in to Pete so he can take them to the Western Wall. I know you have a story that will make parents of millennials very happy. Well, uh, what I found interesting about this story is that it appeared in a collegiate newspaper at a secular university. Uh -huh. It's from the Daily Tar Heel down at the University of North Carolina. And, uh, Zoe Shaver, and I'm Zoe's, Zoe's one of those names that you never know for sure if it's a guy or a girl. So uh, but the, the author of the story talked about uh, a number of the mega churches that they have down in what they call the Triangle, the, the Raleigh-Durham area down there, and just talked about what was uh, bringing millennials and Gen Xers into the church. And, and one of the reasons is a typical congregation of 75 people may have a handful of young adults but unless they're right next to a university or a military base, you're not going to have uh, a lot of young adults, and they're not going to do a whole lot of youth programming. These mega churches, they have staff specifically assigned to mm -hmm. the needs of young adults, and they're going to have a more contemporary style of worship that'll probably bring in a lot of the the Gen Xers. And uh, this particular one that they featured, Providence, which has been around since 1978 down there. They actually have volunteers who go to North Carolina State and pick up the students at the Student Union, bring them over to the church, and then there's, after the church service, they have an 11 a.m. college ministry meeting at a satellite building, and they have dozens of college students coming in for this church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Chuck, when we talk about mega churches, we're not talking about those churches with like 30,000 people. We're talking about a congregation, a mega church is a congregation with 2,000 people or more. So with the university being nearby, then it attracts more students. And it's so true because I was talking with a pastor's wife who said, you know, they disciple young people. They, you know, they christen them or dedicate them when they're babies and watch them grow up in the church only to leave the congregation to leave the flock when they, you know, turn around 19 or 20 and try to come up with ways to attract them back to the church has been the challenge. Yeah, it? when my daughter was at, uh, at Purdue a few years back, um, same type of thing that there were some churches in the Lafayette area that would actually bring the buses by the student union, 
pick kids up, bring them, and then bring them back. And then there was a, uh, an on-campus uh, uh, ministry as well. And uh, you know, chatting with her, you know, the, the number one thing was the authenticity and really mm -hmm. the investment. You know, as opposed to just be getting whisked away to another congregation, uh, the ones that were doing really well were the ones that actually had people on the campus engaging the students, you know, building relationships, uh, getting involved with small groups ministry and that type of thing. So really it boils down to, for the millennials at least, just that real relational uh, connection seemed to be very important. One, I think the other thing is just seeing other people their mm -hmm. own age be part of the worship experience because uh, Quite frankly, at my house, I've got four kids between the ages of 17 and 21 right now. And lots of times when they go to Mass and they see everybody who is having something to do with Mass, whether it's the lector, the priest, the choir, be 55 and over, mm -hmm. they're like, well, what's in this for me? Mm -hmm. And it, it's it's a tough sell sometimes. You know, I think that's the challenge. Sometimes I think mega churches come under fire for having all the quote, bells and whistles like the cafe, you know, I went to a church and I went with someone and they were older and peep, they couldn't believe that they were sitting inside in the, the sanctuary, sanctuary drinking <laughs> coffee, coffee and <laughs> smoke was coming, you know, from somewhere. <laughs> I mean, what are your thoughts on that? They were smoking? That? No, they were not smoking. You know, it was a, a smoke machine creating uh -huh. this atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So this kind of soaking, worshipful atmosphere, that's what the church was like. And I didn't have a problem with it, but what say you, Pete? You know, I, I, I believe in a traditional church more okay. than anything else. Uh, but at the same time, I think you do have to make sure that uh, people uh, of all demographics uh, are certainly welcome to attend. Mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't mean you dumb down the ministry either. That's mm -hmm. right. And I think there's been a lot of uh, controversy about some of the churches that have reached out to the millennials uh, actually softening up the message of the Bible, and I don't think that can be compromised. Uh, I, I do appreciate people who absolutely preach the gospel uh, and at the same time can attract a younger audience. I think that is absolutely terrific and is necessary in today's society, right. very necessary. And uh, hopefully you can strike a good balance between mm -hmm. the two. Uh, and not attract just uh, 55 plus to a church <laughs> uh, and attract some of those younger people who do need the Word of God as a foundation. Let's face it, college can be an incredible temptation. Mm -hmm. oh. And a lot of kids come out of great homes, go to college, and uh, oh, yes. uh, some of my kids, for instance, even when they went to a Christian university, the administration admitted it was uh, sometimes the first time a kid had smoked, first time the kid had drank, first mm -hmm. time the kid ran around, uh, and they had a very strict disciplinary system that uh, a lot of kids resented. But uh, you have to have a balance there and make sure that kids stay on that straight and narrow. So what do you think of churches that may have for the 8 o'clock service is a traditional service and then maybe for the 10 o'clock service is a contemporary? Do you mm -hmm. think churches should go to that extent? to reach their members? Well, like, like Pete said, uh, as long as the, the message is, is being mm -hmm. uh, preached faithfully, the Word is being preached and uh, the Spirit of God's evident there, you know, I think it's not so much about the methods, mm -hmm. it's really more about the message, but I don't care if it's 8 or 10 o'clock, leave the coffee outside <laughs> the sanctuary. It's I'm a distraction. I'm not leaving my coffee it's outside. It's a distraction. <laughs> You're worshiping and people are sipping in coffee and looking yes. around like they're at, uh, at a ball game or something, you know. And, and please, one other thing, if I pet peeve. Yes. Keep the lights up to where you can read your own Bible <laughs> when you bring to church. Don't make it so theatrical that you can't see. You need, a, you need a flashlight to read your Bible in church. That's ridiculous. Well, thank you, Stephen, for your two cents. He's stepping down now office soapbox but we want to know your thoughts about this i mean do you drink coffee at your church let we want you to weigh in join us on social media facebook like us on facebook follow us on twitter and send your email directly to the set of harvest at live at .com. the international news is next got facebook follow the harvest show comment and share your opinions on current events Watch the most inspiring guest interviews right here. Watch my weekly video updates from Israel. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today.
Now on this Monday, October 12th, 2015, here's what's happening in your world. European Union foreign ministers are meeting in Luxembourg today. The Syria crisis and Russia's involvement in it are expected to be high on the agenda. Ministers arriving for the meeting have expressed concern about the situation and are agreeing that dialogue is needed on the issue. After recent events and after, after also actions of Russia, I would say, I cannot say that situation is getting better in spite of those calls to align with efforts of all international community it's it's really done in, in different way eu foreign policy chief federica mogherini calls russia's military action worrying and dangerous unless it's coordinated with the u.s-led coalition attacking islamic state U.S. officials say Russia has directed parts of its air campaign against U.S.-funded groups and other moderate opposition groups in a concerted effort to weaken them. For his part, British Foreign Secretary Philip Hammond says the West cannot work with Syrian President Bashar Assad. He also called for a clear and united condemnation of Russia's airstrikes in Syria. Uh, there's a lot of uh, things to talk about on Syria, but we're very clear that we, uh, we cannot work with Assad as the long-term solution for the future of Syria. We can be flexible about the manner of his departure, we can be flexible about the timing of his departure, uh, but if we try to work with Assad, we will only drive uh, the opposition into the arms of ISIL, the very opposite of the outcome uh, that we want. The German Foreign Minister Frank Walter Steinmeier reiterated everyone needs to be clear who the real enemies are and fight the Islamic State group in Al Nusra Front. Russia says its strikes are mainly aimed at Islamic State and other terrorists, but the ground and air offensive is being waged in areas controlled by mainstream rebels as well as Al Qaeda's Syrian affiliate. Meanwhile, Russia's counterterrorism agency raided a Moscow apartment and arrested a group of people who they say were preparing to carry out an attack in the capital. The statement issued from the National Anti-Terrorism Committee said homemade explosives were found in the apartment. No details were given about the number or identity of the suspects. Russian news agencies citing law enforcement sources said more than 100 residents of the apartment building were evacuated during Sunday's raid and supplies of natural gas were cut off for the duration. Russia's airstrikes in Syria have Islamic extremists turning their sights to Russia and making it easier for them to recruit Russian Muslims. Russia says 2,400 citizens have joined Islamic State. A Palestinian man attacked an Israeli officer with a knife today at the entrance to Jerusalem's old city, and he was shot dead by police. It's the latest attack in a recent wave of Israeli-Palestinian violence. Paramilitary border police officers noticed the man acting suspiciously and ordered him to approach and be searched. With gear. The knife didn't penetrate his protection, and uh, the nearby officer who was located also on the scene shot the terrorist who was neutralized at the scene. The attack took place near the Lion's Gate of Jerusalem's walled old city on the predominantly Arab eastern side of the city. And the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, Antonio Guterres, reminded European Union member states of their shared responsibility in addressing the refugee crisis. Speaking to reporters in Athens, Guterres said the refugee crisis is impossible to deal with on a purely national level. I believe that we all understand that this is not a challenge that can be faced by one country alone. This is not a Greek problem, this is a European problem, and this is a global problem but with a particular area of responsibility of the European Union. No, no, no. Guterres also noted there are nearly four million Syrian refugees living in the Middle East. One of those countries is Jordan, where a Roman Catholic Church has taken in 120 refugees. The French Prime Minister, Manuel Valls, is among those calling for countries taking in refugees to receive international aid. Coming up next, the co-founder of Liberty University, Dr. Elmer Towns, talks about reaching a new generation with the power of the pen. And Brian Bush is standing by in Israel with an update. What do you have for us, Brian? Well, hi, Chuck. Uh, I'm sure our viewers want to know what the situation on the ground here is in Jerusalem, as well as the terrible bombing attacks that we've seen in Turkey, how that affects things there. And the answer to the question, was El Baghdadi in that convoy that the Iraqi Air Force targeted over the weekend? Friends, I'll be with you a little bit later in the show to answer all that. 
The Harvest Show continues right after this. Help heal the sick, mend broken relationships, reach the lost with the love of Christ. Do all of that and more when you support LaCie Broadcasting Prayer Line. Prayer Line is a channel of God's love, reaching more than 10,000 people every month. Your gift today will help keep Prayer Line available for free 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Go to your phones right now and call 1-800-365-3732. Give now and keep Prayer Line going strong. If you want to do more and be more, but your stamina runs out of steam, you need the top-selling Essential Vitamin Mineral Pack by Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez. The Doctor's Making Healthy Choices Essential Pack costs only $59.95, but the health benefits are priceless. You get Mineral Concentrate, an unsurpassed formula of trace minerals essential to good health. Omega-3 for overall vascular support and healthy brain function. Vita Sprouts, a superior form of multivitamin vitamins and you get Sol you see for a strong immune system that's mineral concentrate omega-3 vita sprouts and Sol you see an incredible value for only $59.95 and if you act now shipping is free call 1-800-965-2345 or go to mhclife.com to get the doctor's essential pack from making healthy choices that's 1-800-965-2345 or mhclife.com these days, reading your Bible is as easy as opening an app on your phone or doing a quick internet search. But how do people in developing countries hear the gospel when they don't have access to television, the internet, or Christian publications? The answer for many is shortwave radio, technology that's accessible to millions and ideal for broadcasting God's Word to areas where missionaries simply cannot reach or aren't permitted to travel. We're so thankful for your support, which has helped continue the work Dr. Lester Sumrall began 70 years ago. Through your gifts and prayers, we continue to transmit God's Word to every major continent in the world through shortwave radio, helping to reach a potential 20 million homes through this powerful technology. Through the support of friends like you, the good news of Jesus continues to be heard by many living in the most difficult to reach corners of the globe. And we thank you. Dr. Elmer Towns is the co-founder of Liberty University, the largest private nonprofit university in the world. Towns is also a prominent Christian leader, speaker, and author of over 170 books, eight of which are listed on the Christian Booksellers bestseller list. And he served as the dean of the B.R. Lakin School of Religion, dean of Liberty Baptist, excuse me, Liberty University Baptist Theological Seminary, and the distinguished professor of systematic theology. Wow. It is our pleasure and <laughs> honor you. to have you with us here today, here today, sir. <laughs> and yeah. good morning to you. Good morning, sir. Yeah, I think your materials are maybe some of the most widely read and widely taught around the world, especially the Sunday school materials and, and church teaching materials. I love serving the Lord. I just want to do more for God. I turned 83 this week, <laughs> and I want my last 10 years of my life to be my most productive. So I want to do more for God than ever. Well, Amen. Wow. Well, he's well on his way. I was trying to wrap my brain around the fact that you've written 170 books. As a writer, I'm trying well, to... Well, when you get to be dean, <laughs> you can assign whatever class you want. And every okay. class I signed, I ended up either writing the textbook, turning all the notes into a textbook. And so what my whole contention is, if I'm going to spend two or three hours putting a lecture together, why not spend a half hour and write it into a chapter? Mm -hmm. And so many of my textbooks came out of my courses, and then I taught the pastor's class at Thomas Road Baptist Church 30 years, and all of that material has become textbooks. And so I'm a write-a-holic. Have you ever heard that phrase before? I just love to write. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it started, didn't it, when you were at Midwest uh, Bible College? Yes. And the textbooks just weren't doing it for you. That's so you decided to yes. research and write your own. Yes, sir. That was the beginning. <laughs> uh, if you wouldn't mind commenting, uh, Dr. Towns, you know, a little topic as we started the program today about millennials in the church and the integ integration of uh, faith and university. Mm. Liberty University you were sharing, uh, largest in, in the world. Over 100,000 students have, have gone through. Online. 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 Okay. We have 100,000 students active. All Online, last year. today. Now, in addition to that, we have 14,000 on campus. Mm -hmm. And when we first started, we, we were so happy to get 154. And the second year, 
great news. We got 420. The third year, 600. And the fourth year, we had 1,000. And we've attracted students. We want to go out and change the world. I spoke in the very first chapel on September the 10th, 1971. I spoke from the Great Commission, go into all the world, make disciples. I said, to go to all the world, young people, let's capture the world. Mm -hmm. But before you can capture the world, you must capture yourself. And you capture yourself in devotions and service to the Lord and all of your studies. And then after you capture yourself, then you've got to capture the school around you, where you are, the learning process, and learn everything you can. And then let's go out and let's preach the gospel around the world. Mm. Well, so, well, that certainly gives you the credibility to talk about the state of Christian education. What would you say? What's the report card? Well, I'd say that we've never been better and we've never been weaker. We could do more mm -hmm. because I always believe in the power of the Holy Spirit through the teacher, through the evangelist, through church planting. And if we can do so much more, and I, I hope God will help us to do more. Now, I want you to know that we can reach the world today. We can reach the world. I was going to reach for my cell phone. I took it out. But that cell phone, around the world, people can go to school. They can go to a class. And do you realize there are 5 billion cell phones in the world? And there are 7 billion people. And the cell phone can be the classroom. And here is Elmore Towns teaching the gospel of John right on your cell phone. And you can take notes and learn and we can reach the world today. Mm, wow. wow. Now, let's kind of uh, get to what we were here to talk about, and that is uh, a, a book. Now, you've written over 170 Christian books on yeah. Bible study, yeah. systematic theology, Christian life, living and discipleship. Uh, we're talking about Grandpa Pitch for the Cubs. <laughs> okay. How did this come about? How did this come about? This book is a fiction book. Now, you know, let me tell you why it's fiction. Because the Cubs go to the World Series. <laughs> and it's a fiction book. And I wrote it when I was 62 years old. And I was living in Lynchburg, Virginia. So that was tw almost 20, 20 years, years I ago. Wrote it, and then all of a sudden I decided to get it printed. I took a sabbatical last year, so I, I got it all ready and got it out. But when I wrote this book, I always dreamed of pitching in the major leagues when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. But I was not fast enough. But I was fairly accurate. And so I tell the story of a, a man who is 62 years old. He's a pastor. He goes down to the local, it's called the Hillcats, Lynchburg Hillcats. He has a, he has a church in Lynchburg, Virginia, where Liberty is. And so he goes down, and he's supposed to pray before the game, and he sees this guy, Harry Conley. He's the coach for the minor league uh, Cubs. And he said, oh, we played together in high school. They got to talking, so he, Harry says, come on out and pitch batting practice for me. So he goes in and puts on the sweats and pitches batting practice. And he said, I got something I want to show you. And so what happens is that uh, Gramps is missing half a finger right here. It's gone. And so he's learned to take that finger and throw a knuckleball. Now, a knuckleball flies, but he can control it. And he can throw it across the plate every time. And so Harry said, that's pretty good. You're really good. Well, come to find out, the Cubs are losing 19 to nothing at the end of the ninth inning. He said, come out and pitch the ninth inning. He said, oh, I'm a pastor. I can't do that. He said, I got just a thing. So they go in the dugout. They put on a clown, a, a clown's hat. It's got gray curls. He said, nobody will see you. And so he kind of hides himself and puts this baseball cap with the gray curls, goes out and strikes out three, three batters, nine pitches. And he's pretty good. So two or three days later, he goes to another small a team, and he plays again, and so he pitches three or three times, and so pretty good. But what he does, he turns that little minor league Cub team around, and so Harry gets promoted to the Cubs. He's up in Chicago, Wrigley Field, and so uh, Gramps goes to visit him. He said, now, you can't pitch up here, can't pitch batting practice. I got you, I got you. Well, that day, the Cubs are again losing 19 to nothing. So they called him and said, I got that Gramps hat. So he puts on the great, great curls and goes in. And he takes the Los Angeles Dodgers, three last three batters, strikes them all out, nine pitches. He's got a knuckle curve. All of a sudden, Chicago falls in love with Gramps. It's on WGN, the radio. It's on the television. <laughs> Harry <laughs> Carey's announcing it. What's that? Harry Carey's announcing yeah, it. Yeah, Harry, Harry Carey wrote the intro to the book before he <laughs> died. So that's pretty good. Anyway, so he's the darling of Chicago. Now, it's a very simple book with a lot of fun, but underneath there are very insidious plots happening. 
And so Gramps is hiding his identity. He doesn't tell his church. He doesn't tell his wife. He's hiding his identity. But there's a second thing. When he was a 20-year-old at Moody Bible Institute, he preached down at a rescue mission. And when he preached there, he came out that night, he heard this girl kind of crying in an alley, runs over there, and a man's raping her. And so he said, stop it, all that. The guy pulls out a gun and says, run out of here, I'm going to kill you. He said, you won't kill me. So this Gramps is a 20-year-old. He reaches over with his finger. He's going to put it at the end of the gun, and the guy blows his finger off. And they wrestle, and he kills him. He said, I can never be a preacher. I killed somebody. Uh, he said, that ruins my whole career. And so the girl runs away. He runs away. He said, he left him dead. He said, nobody will ever know. Nobody. So for the rest of his life, he's hiding. He killed a man. Mm. Except the plot thickens. There is, a, there is a sergeant, a police detective. His very first case, he finds the finger. And for the next 40 years... He keeps the finger and a jar of formaldehyde on his desk. He said, every day he walks in and said, I'm going to find you. If it's the last thing I do, I'm going to find you. And so you got two people searching for each other, a man hiding and a man searching. Se seeking. And that's the subplot of the book. Yeah, we're going to get back to that in just a moment. Uh, still to come, though, today, Brian Bush is going to join us later with an update on the attack at the Turkish Peace Rally. But we'll be back in just a minute with Dr. Elmer Towns. Stay with us. <laughs> The eyes of the world focus on Jerusalem, and the world press critiques its every move. Christian believers seek to come to the city, to walk where Jesus walked. I'm Brian Bush, and I live in Jerusalem's old city, reporting three times a week on The Harvest Show. Think of me as your eyes and ears. Join me as we look at things in the Middle East from a Christian perspective on The Harvest Show on this La Cie Broadcasting Channel. It's amazing what prayer can do. It can heal the sick, put broken marriages back together, set people free from addictions to alcohol and drugs. At LaCie Broadcasting, we know that God answers prayer because we see it every day. My dad, Dr. Lester Sumrall, knew the power of prayer. That's why he started Prayer Line back in 1970. Over the last 45 years, millions of people have found hope and healing through this vital lifeline. Each month, our dedicated volunteers and staff receive more than 10,000 phone calls and emails from people from all over the world who need a touch from God. It costs $32,000 a month to keep Prayerline up and running, but the benefits it provides are priceless. Without your generous support, this critical lifeline would go silent. Please don't let that happen. Your gift of $50 or $500 will keep Prayerline available for free 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Any amount you can give will help so much. So go to your phone right now and call 1-800-365-3732. That's 1-800-365-3732. You can also give online at lacie.com. That's lacie.com. Thank you for giving to keep this vital lifeline open to so many. All right, and we're back having a wonderful time with Dr. Elmer Towns, co-founder of Liberty University and author of, amongst 170 other things, <laughs> Grandpa Pitched for the Cubs. Now, is this your first fictional novel? Well, it's the first fiction, truly fiction. I did a children's story one time. Okay. And I wrote a fictional account of the life of Jesus Christ. And so I've done fiction before, mm -hmm. and it's been well-received. And so I thought I would do this. Yeah. And it just sat around for 20 years, and then I got it published. Yeah. Let yeah. me finish the story. Can I do that? Yes, if you're quick, because i got some questions for you. Okay. Well, the story basically is Night Train Lane is a, a Roman Catholic, and he goes to Mass, and he confesses. After all these years, he says to the priest, I so hate that man without the finger that when I get him, I'm going to kill him. He said, I'm going to shoot him. He said, it's wrong, but I can't forgive him. And so all of a sudden, you read the story, and each, each week or two, uh, Gramps goes back and pitches for the Cubs, and they, get, and they go into the World Series. And so they get to the World Series, and all of a sudden, on the last game of the World Series, uh, Cubs are going to win the World Series, and it, right outside of Wrigley Field, Night Train Lane finally meets his nemesis. 
he meets the man without the finger. Mm -hmm. And so they begin to talk together. And I'm not going to tell you the end. I'm going to say, you got to buy the book to read it. <laughs> <laughs> but now, you can get it at Amazon.com. Okay. And uh, they give you a good discount and get it at Amazon.com. But let me say this, the very last, the very last line, after the World Series game is over and after night training day, he goes home that night. He gets in bed. No one is known. And his wife, Ruth, that's my wife's name, turns to him and says, good night, Gramps. We knew all along you were pitching. We knew a whole church knows about it. So <laughs> <laughs> you can't keep a secret. What are some of the, uh, the, uh, the spiritual themes or the underlying uh, gospel themes that you're going to find? Oh, in, I in say this work? it's very, very much about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The idea of forgiveness. That some people that you hate, God can overcome the hatred. There's a whole concept of what, what can a preacher do when he's asked to preach on a Sunday? Uh, the issue of separation, what is right and what is wrong, and how he, he makes his decision, what he's going to do. So you'll see those spiritual principles in the life of Gramps as he's struggling. He's got a grandson, and the grandson he pitches to, and he's trying to mentor that grandson and bring him along. And so all of these issues come out in the book. So it's not just the story mm -hmm. about the Cubs going, by the way, uh, at this season, the yeah. Cubs may go all the way this they year. They might. And I'm a Cubs fan. I used to live on the north side of Chicago. I taught at a school up there, and I used to go and take my son as often as we could to the Cubs game. And so I love it. And so there are many spiritual principles there that will help you understand Jesus Christ. Let's go back to forgiveness because I think that's a huge one. I think a lot mm. of people struggle with that. They cannot seem to get started with the whole process. For a person who's struggling with unforgiveness, okay. what would you say? How can they start? Well, here is, here is Night Train Lane, a hardened cop at the end of his time. He's, he's, all these years he had this bitterness. And when he comes face to face with the man he hates the most, and the man says, I'm sorry, you know, forgive mm -hmm. me. And that's what Jesus taught. When, you, when a, someone has ought against you, go to them and confess your sins and ask for forgiveness. And when Gramps asks for forgiveness, it turns the whole, the whole story around. And mm -hmm. so that's the, that's the main theme. Good question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, getting back to uh, a little bit of what we discussed earlier and kind of you mentioned the state of Christian education today. When we look at the, the church at large, mm -hmm. uh, just from your perspective, you've, you've been around the block, you've been there, you've done it, you've seen great things mm -hmm. and you've seen you know, the ups and downs mm -hmm. of, of modern church history. Uh, if you, your message to Christian leaders today would be what? The secret of Liberty University, why we're the largest, is because of our commitment to ministry. Put your eyes on the real thing. Make the, there was a movie where a man says, make the main thing the, main, the thing. main thing. The main thing is training people for ministry in the church and the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. And when we started Liberty, we said, we aren't going to just be another academic institution. We believe this statement, the college is the extension of the local church at the collegiate level. Mm. Everything the church must do to carry out its purpose, the college must do mm. at the collegiate level. And the purpose of the church is to reach the world, to present the gospel to every person in the world, and make disciples. And so that's what we must do. That's what the college must do. And we have a passion for training young people to carry out the Great Commission around the world. Now, uh, one more good thing. Just recently, the uh, chaplain in chief of the whole U.S. Air Force is a Liberty grad. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we have more Liberty grads in the military chaplaincy, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, than any other sending school because we preach, get out and minister for Jesus Christ. Well, Dr. Towns, you'll be surprised to know that what, at one point I was considering a master's in marriage and family therapy. I'm a single person, marriage and family therapy. You go figure that figure one that out. out. Okay. But I took an online course at Liberty University, so I'm one of the 100,000 people okay. who took that course. Yeah. <laughs> okay. God bless you. <laughs> but that course was offered years ago, long before you know, um, we were the first virtual school. Really? Yeah, that's right. It, that, it was just like before it's time. In 1984, I remember we began to discuss this in a dean's meeting, and I saw we could reach the world. This could be awesome. That the power of television is so compelling. It's not just the ear for the radio, but it's the eye also. And when I saw that, I said, I'm going to do everything possible. 
And so I put a lot of courses. I spent my time, my days, my nights putting courses together on television in order to reach the world for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And every time I've been, I was in Africa recently. I was in Nigeria at the Nigerian Baptist Pastors Conference. Two men came up and said, we're going to be your armor bearers. Both of my former students on both sides, graduates of mine. And then I said, how many here are Liberty? And we have people taking courses online in Nigeria, Baptist pastors. And then I went from there over to uh, Kenya. And I said, how many of you here have been our Liberty students? Two or three hands went up. These were Assembly of God people. And so whether I'm with Pentecostals, Assembly mm -hmm. of God, or mm -hmm. Baptist, I run across Liberty students. Yeah, I was going to mention that because uh, it, Liberty, being Baptist, and some would say fundamentalist, the experience, though, is that you reach a whole broad range mm. of different denominations. You're yeah. very open for that kind of interaction. Absolutely. We have about 2,500 graduates of our seminary two years ago when I stepped down as dean. I'm just now uh, kind of partially retired, just a teacher, just a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, when we stepped down, about 20% of all of our seminary graduates were Pentecostal. Mm. And we love lady preachers. Mm -hmm. And so we, about 20% of our graduates at our seminary were lady preachers. And so we believe in training the body of Christ to carry out the Great Commission. We put our essentials, the fundamentals are important. Mm -hmm. Put your emphasis on the fundamentals. Make the main thing the, the main, main thing. thing. And if it's secondary, keep it secondary. We've got about a minute left. One quick question. What's next for you, Dr. Elmer Towns? <laughs> okay, I have a book coming out Recently, it's going to be on three searching kings. I've done the historical search and come to find out those three wise men were really kings. Mm -hmm. Or at least they were in line to be a king. And they search out and they find the baby Jesus and worship him. But those three searching kings are not only searching for the king, they're searching for their own identity. They're searching to overcome their own problems, their own background, their own prejudices. And they have to overcome their own selves to be able to to worship the king. Mm -hmm. well, was there a lot of uh, historical research involved? Oh, in absolutely, that yes. Uh, Interesting. And I, want, I want to come back and talk about three surging <laughs> kings. We'll do that. And uh, actually, now that we're coming into the holiday season, it's a great, it's a great a good message. Time. Good mm -hmm. timing. Good well, that's timing. an invitation. Yes, sir. I'll count Anytime. On. More than welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Elmer Towns, with us on the Harvest Show today. And to connect with Dr. Towns, listen. Forget about websites. You can email him directly. This is his personal email address, <laughs> eltowns at liberty.edu. You can also go to our website, harvest-tv.com. You'll find an easy way to link back to uh, connect with Dr. Towns and pick up a copy of Grandpa Pitched for the Cubs. Coming up later, Pastor Mark Lance is going to join us in sharing the secret to seeing and knowing God in today's motivational message, The Power of Focus. But next, Brian Bush is going to bring us an update with the latest news that's breaking in Israel. We'll be right back. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Do you have some treasures like silver and gold coins or little jewelry that you don't wear anymore? Why not invest them into changing lives for Jesus? Ask yourself if these treasures are really worth keeping, or should you invest them into making an eternal difference in someone's life? Call 1-800-365-3732 for a prepaid insured shipping envelope. Lay up your treasure in heaven. It'll be waiting for you when you get there. When's the last time you described your vacation as unforgettable and life-changing? As a Christian, one of the most meaningful journeys you'll ever take is a visit to the Holy Land. Since 1965, the ministry of Lassie Tours has been privileged to change the lives of thousands of people by providing meaningful and exciting trips to Israel. A visit to the Holy Land with Lassie Tours is a vacation you will actually experience. You'll walk the same path that Jesus took with the cross, get baptized in the Jordan River, sail on the Sea of Galilee and step back in time as you visit a first century village in Nazareth. Pray at the Western Wall, float in the lowest spot on earth and get your hands dirty by planting your own tree. But most importantly, you'll experience the land that God chose for his home here on earth and you'll never be the same. La Cie Tours travels with you to Israel every February, June, and November since 1965. Call today to receive a free information packet or visit on the web at lacietours.com. 
Dr. Lester Sumrall was given a global vision to reach a million souls every day for Jesus Christ. To fulfill his God-given assignment, he began establishing the many outreaches of Lassie Broadcasting. Today, the ministry reaches millions of people in more than 190 nations through the power of television, radio, free Bibles, shortwave satellite, and prayer line. But we need your help to reach millions more. Will you join Partners in Faith and help us spread the gospel around the world? Will you commit to giving a monthly gift of $25, $50, $100 or more? Dr. Sumrall knew he couldn't fulfill his vision without the help of thousands of partners. But don't wait. Become a partner in faith today. Call 1-800-365-3732 or visit lacy.com to give safe and secure online. The Bible says he who wins souls is wise. Make the wise choice today to become a partner in faith and help us win souls for Jesus. To say the least, a tumultuous weekend in the Middle East. Let's get an update on that situation from our Lucy correspondent, Brian Bush. He joins us now from Jerusalem. And Brian, there in Jerusalem, what is it like after a weekend that saw more of the same in terms of unrest? I can tell you, Chuck, we are seeing a much larger paramilitary presence as more than 5,000 Israeli security personnel are on the ground in and around the old city along with metal detectors in various places. What has been constant are the police operations arresting those that the security forces believe are involved in disturbances going from one area of Arab neighborhoods to another which ratchets up the overall tension. Chuck. Brian, then there was this horrific bomb attack at a Turkish peace rally. No group has yet said it carried it out. What are you hearing there in the Middle East as to who may be responsible? Yes, well, what I'm hearing, Chuck, is that this terrible, what appears to be two suicide bomber attack, uh, is an attempt to influence the Turkish elections due to take place on November 1st. There are three possibilities as to who is behind this horrible horrible act. The Kurds themselves in an effort to gain sympathy, but that is unlikely as their election success back in June is why Mr. Erdogan was forced to share his government power. The second option are the Turks themselves because they want to crush the Kurds. But if solid evidence were to emerge that the government was behind this tragic bombing, it would be the end of Mr. Erdogan and the people don't believe that he is that desperate to carry out such a heinous act as this. The last option is Islamic State. The bombing carries their hallmark. Uh, they benefit the most from pitting the two enemies together, um, whom they are both fighting against, and striking the Kurds at a peace rally damages the perception of the government who has struck Islamic State hard in these last two months. Chuck? Well, Islamic State had a convoy that got struck hard by the Iraqi Air Force. Do people think that the Iraqi Air Force in that strike got the IS leader al-Baghdadi or not? Chuck, that's the $10 million question, literally. And the answer is just not clear. Uh, senior Iraqi security sources have been quoted just a few hours ago as saying that they likely did not get Baghdadi, and they, along with everyone else in the intelligence community, will have their ears open all the more for an answer to that question. Chuck? And then there's a Washington Post reporter in Iran who allegedly was found guilty of espionage. That sounds more like the Nixon administration than anything else. Yes, Jason Rezaian uh, and uh, his fate really remains unclear, uh, cloudy. Um, of course, he is still incarcerated. The latest word from his lawyer is that she is not clear on whether he has been sentenced or not, which is key. But it does seem that he does have another court appearance at trial. He is sadly a pawn right now in the greater political chess game that Iran is playing with 
the United States. Chuck? Well, certainly we'll keep him in our prayers. Thank you very much, Brian. A reminder, Brian gives us exclusive content from Israel, not only here on The Harvest Show, but also on The Harvest Show Facebook page. So make sure you give us a like over on Facebook. Well, Mondays are Motivational Mondays here at The Harvest Show. We're so happy to have Pastor Mark Lance with us. And today, his motivational message, I forgot what it was. Oh, it's the power of focus. Pastor Mark Lance here coming with just a real quick motivational minute that I want to share with you. You know, back in 1504, Michelangelo completed the statue of David. That was one of the most renowned works of art during the Renaissance period. Someone asked him how he completed such an amazing piece of art. And this is what he responded by saying, I eliminated everything that was not David. What an incredible statement. You know, people who do extraordinary things are able to do it because they have extraordinary focus. Focus brings to your mind the most important things that are needed in your life as you're reaching forward toward your goals and your God-given dreams. The Bible teaches us in Proverbs 4 and 25, let your eyes look straight ahead. Let your eyelids look right before you. You see, when you discipline yourself to focus only on the things that line up with your goals and your dreams, you're going to unlock the clarity and the strength you need to achieve great things in your life. Everyone else may have simply saw, quote unquote, a hunk of rock, but Michelangelo saw David in that hunk of rock. With every twist, with every turn of his chisel, his mind was focused on the person of David that would eventually emerge from that stone. You know, life is going to bring you a lot of twists and a lot of turns. There's going to be distractions in your particular pathway to succeed. But the successful man or woman knows their eyes must stay straight ahead. You must have a picture that God has created for your life. So the focused person doesn't let anything deter them from that picture. Everyone else may only see a hunk of stone, but you know what? You see a finished product of a life that is well lived, your dreams that are fulfilled. So here's a couple things I want you to work on in the next seven days to sharpen your focus. First of all, evaluate. Look at your daily routine. Evaluate what activities are leading you closer to your God-given destiny. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Choose to live and operate every day in your strength zone. Don't focus on what you cannot do, but rather focus on improving the strengths of your life. Work and watch your energy, your success soar to new heights when you evaluate your strength. Secondly, eliminate. What activities or relationships are distracting you from really becoming who you want to be? Do you find yourself checking your Facebook status too many times throughout the day? Is your mind filled with senseless trivia, maybe news from the media that is disempowering you? Well, right now, choose some things in your life that you need to cut out of your life. Sharpen your focus by eliminating things that are not necessary. And then thirdly, create. Before you go to sleep every night, Make sure that the next day is completely outlined, both in your mind as well as on paper. In fact, never start the day till you've finished it on paper. Having your day planned increases your focus, eliminates the activities that may distract you from really achieving what you need to do every single day. Plan the day and then pursue that plan with passion. Friend, I believe the best days of your life are still ahead of you. There's a masterpiece within you that God has created, but he's left it up to you to really chisel away the things that don't belong and bring that masterpiece out so the world can see who you are and what God has created with in you. Refine your focus, get amazed at the changes that I believe will lead your life to the next level. Start it today, and I believe God will bless you. Did you know that millions live in spiritual darkness seeking the Word of God? Lacey Broadcasting is piercing the darkness 24 hours a day. The window of opportunity to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ has never been greater, but who knows when it will close. Join Partners in Faith today for as little as $25 a month, and you can help us bring light into a dark world. Join us by visiting PartnerInFaith.com today. 
To have what scripture says is given by inspiration of God is a real treasure. And that's why we want to invite you to sign up for the treasury of Dr. Lester Sumrall. This free daily e-devotional draws from Dr. Sumrall's timeless writings and biblical insight on many issues confronting us today. Just go to lacy.com and click on the treasury sign up banner to receive the treasury of Dr. Lester Sumrall in your inbox every day. That's lesea.com. In the last 15 years, friends like you have helped send over 700,000 Bibles to anyone who requests a copy through our Spread the Word ministry. God has certainly been working powerfully through your support. The Book of Romans says, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. That's why we're so thankful for your partnership to help us take the best news of all time to more of those who are desperate to hear it. It costs just $5 to send a Bible to someone hungry to read it in Africa, South America, or many other places around the globe. Through your generosity, many thousands have already read about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And with your support, we look forward to helping fulfill Dr. Lester Sumrall's vision of reaching the untold billions yet untold with the gospel. From Studio B. For the very best in Christian music, be sure to watch live from Studio B each week on this Lassie broadcasting station. long we've been asking you to help support our Lucy Broadcasting prayer line which extends a lifeline to people in need. That prayer line number 1-800-365-3732 is the same number you would call up if you want to make a donation to support prayer line. You'd say well why do I have to make a donation to support prayer line? There are volunteers in there. You realize we get 12,000 calls in there uh, and that line is toll free 12,000 calls a month and that line is toll free, yes, to you. It's not toll free to us. We've got to pay for those calls and, and we want to be able to support the prayer line and keep it going. So we just ask that if you can, if it's within your realm, if it's within your prayer life, make a donation to help support the Lassie prayer line. Boy, it's such a valuable resource to so many different people out there. You know, Pastor Charles is joining us now. Pastor was with the me a couple of weeks ago and we we're going through the numbers uh, and it, it's just mind-boggling how many people call in uh, the same kinds of things that Pete was talking about Pastor Charles at the beginning of the show what he takes to the Western Wall is what you get every day relationships finances mm-hmm. illness people yeah. needing healings and God bless the people in there who take those calls because I can only imagine eight hours of that a day has to wear on them after a while. Yeah, it does, it does Chuck. You know, four minutes, if, about every four minutes, we're getting a request, and you get a person who's on the prayer line um, making a, a, a prayer with a caller, uh, praying about a relationship, and then four minutes later, they're praying about somebody's financial woes, and four minutes after that, they're praying about somebody that's locked up in jail, you know, and so... I mean, they're all over the place. And a lot of times I have to tell these guys, you know, hey, look, sometimes just take a break, circle up the wagons and pray one for the other and get back on track. Yeah, so we encourage you at home to pray for our prayer line volunteers who are Mm -hmm. taking those calls. But as those calls come in, what are some of the ones that have come in over the weekend, Pastor Well, some of the ones that's come over the weekend, uh, you were talking about earlier about giving uh, to prayer line. And uh, certainly there are some who give uh, pledges and donations, but then there are some, uh, Chuck, who come alongside of us each and every month. And those are our partners in faith. For instance, Lauren says, I just recently divorced and I'm now beginning to experience financial and emotional woes. She says, please pray that the Lord will deliver me. And then we have Sandy, also a, a, a partner in faith, says, please agree with me in prayer that my family be saved and healed in their bodies. Several are sick and have ongoing pains that they suffer. 
And then Mary, Mary says, uh, pray uh, that when I go in for my appointment to check my eyes for cataracts, the Lord will give me favor. And then finally, we have Mark and Leela says, our son is getting married and we are believing God to supply their needs. And then she says, uh, please pray that he hears the Lord as it pertains to being a great husband. So again, you know, the gambit, you know, all over the place, different types of prayer requests are coming in. Oh, I pray the Lord that I have what it takes to be a great husband <laughs> as yeah. well. But, Tell me about it. <laughs> well, uh, that's another show, though. Let, why don't is. we just another pray show. for the people uh, that are watching today? Sure. Father in heaven, we just thank you today, Lord God, for those ones, especially those ones who are partners in faith, those ones who are calling in, Lord, and can come alongside of us and helping us to stay on. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we just thank you today because we know that you're touching their lives and we know that you're moving on their behalf. And for that, we thank and praise you, give you honor and glory in the mighty name of your Son. Amen and amen. And thank you very much, Pastor Charles. We appreciate a reminder, the same reminder we gave you at the beginning of the show. Now is a great time to get in your prayer requests for Pete Sumrall to take them over to the Western Wall. He'll be taking them over next month, but you know, we need time to get those all accumulated and put them on the flash drive. So we encourage you to get those prayer requests in early. Pete always takes those requests to the Western Wall. Here you see the last time that he was there. and. He just slides that flash drive right on into the crack and leaves those prayer requests there for God to do what he will with them. We want your prayer requests to be there as well. We'd love for you to also go to the Western Wall with Pete Summerall sometime so you can pray about that as well and see what you can do to take a Lassie tour. And we certainly pray that you're going to have a blessed day and be back with us tomorrow on another edition of Harvest. The number one question that most people ask is how they can be sure they won't outlive their money in retirement. Good question. One way is to set up a source of fixed income that's safe and secured for your lifetime. That's what a charitable gift annuity does for you. Call for a free, personal, customized illustration of how a charitable gift annuity can provide lifetime income that never changes. Call now, won't you? Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.